Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Here we are once again, Growing in Grace. I'm Joel Brzezinski with Mike Kapler. Yes, it's the Breeze Man and the Gap getting together for our weekly chat about the goodness and grace of God. You know, where where are some of those hyper-grace preachers that are being (laughs) talked about these days? So, you know, you probably should just stop listening right now, because we're just going to mess you all up and teach you to go out and sin and all that stuff. (laughs) (laughs) New listeners, don't hit that stop button just yet. No, we really, also have a sense of humor. I really, I really, I think we actually have the opposite effect because a cap something that you were sharing on Facebook this morning. Um, you know, just recently, you and I were out to eat with our pastor and another friend, and we were just sitting there at the restaurant, just chatting away, talking about the wonderful grace of God, the goodness of God. And uh, well, I'll let you you tell the story because there was a there was a, a couple there sitting at this other table, and you can share what what happened as we were eating there or as we were getting well, up to go. Yeah, it was uh, well, we were there were four of us at the table, and and our pastor was there with us, and we were just going back and forth about different things about grace and different views on different things, and asking each other. You know, we bounce things off of each other and and learn from each other too, but. It was all cool stuff like what we talk about here on the podcast. And I did notice a couple times out of the corner of my eye because I I could see their table that the lady would sometimes her back was sort of to me, but I could tell that she was kind of listening. I could I could I could see the body language. Anyway, we're getting up to leave after sitting there for an hour or so. And and, um, she asked while we were getting up, where where do you go to church? (laughs) And uh, so we told the, the lady and here's our pastor and. Uh, here's how you find the place because they were kind of new to town. They were looking for something. And uh, as I was walking out, though, it occurred to me, it was almost like the Lord was giving me a, a, a teaching moment. And he said, see, when the message is out there for people to hear, I'm talking about the real message of the gospel, not a lot of the religious stuff that people have been exposed to. But when that message is out there to be heard, people will be drawn to it. They'll be uh, attracted to it. And uh, I thought was just an example. Yeah. Because they, 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 they wanted to come to our church. They, they were listening to, I don't know what they all heard. <laughs> we talked about a lot of stuff in an hour. Right. But they liked what they heard. Yeah, you never know where someone's coming from, because I, I kind of noticed, too, that they were uh, listening. You know, I, you know I, I, I knew that we were close enough that they could hear the stuff that we were talking about. And you never know what someone is thinking. Are, are they thinking that we're just some goofballs or just some nutty people talking about religion you know because sometimes if you just mention Jesus you know it just you get this religious connotation but uh, we were talking about Jesus from obviously the perspective of God's grace and love and goodness and like you say whatever it is that we were talking about seemed to uh, rub off on the on these people and they were attracted to what we were talking about and they wanted to come visit our church and so that's you know like you say it's God's kindness that leads people to him and it's not you know hell and fire and all that stuff it's god's goodness that he has planned on using to draw people to himself because that's who he is he's good and he loves people <laughs> and so that's what he draws people to him with his his own goodness and kindness and love so it's just so beautiful when uh, you're able to see some some of the fruit of that yeah, and now if if you didn't catch last week's podcast, I would like to command you to go back and listen to it. Just stop this one, but I'm not going to do that because I know that that won't have any effect on you if I try to command you. <laughs> but I would encourage you to go back and catch last week's program uh, entitled Hyper Grace. You can find it at Hyper- growingandgrace.org. Hyperlegalism. I'm, did I say hyper grace? Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to get down and say five Hail Marys right now. Uh, I command you to <laughs> get that out of your system. <laughs> man, oh man. That's scary that I said that. All right. Hyper legalism. Um, to be honest with you, the reason I said that is because it's kind of a spin off 
from a book that's out there with the title of Hyper Grace, where we were mentioned in it. But there, there were some really good things b- being brought out about the law and the commandments and, and one of those things. And then we're going to continue off of that here just a little bit and go back to some things Jesus said. Romans chapter 7, one thing you brought out last week, Joel, was where Paul said, and I'm, I'm picking up in the middle of a lot of stuff here, but he said, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said, you shall not covet. But sin, taking opportunity by the commandment, produced in me all manner of evil desire. For apart from the law, sin was dead. And so it goes on from there, and you shared some of that last week. But I just think it's it's interesting that, again, the, the law is what actually uh, entices people to sin. Not that the law is bad. Uh, the law is, and you again go back to last week's show. The law is 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 holy. It's 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 righteous. It's good, and it has a perfection to it that we can't live up to. It demands perfection, but can't provide it for us. And it's actually this law that entices people to do the wrong things. It's grace that will allow people to enter into uh, the the life of Christ and to see that demonstrated in our own lives. So I think a lot of people caught up in the in the whole hyper grace thing that really they're just into hyper legalism. It's because they view the old covenant as something that's still in place, although some parts of it have been taken away and replaced with new parts from the new covenant when really the old has been done away with and been the entire thing has been replaced with the new covenant. And so that's some of what we talked about last week. So I think this this passage here in Romans 7, though, is one of many that got touched on. I, w- I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said you shall not covet. So it's almost, Joel, it's almost like instead of being under the new covenant, we've got hyper-grace or hyper-legalistic people out there who are under the new covetousness. <laughs> Maybe they're getting confused between That's the bad. two here. There seems to be a contradiction. <laughs> I would not have known the hyper covetousness <laughs> if not for the hyper legalists. <laughs> I don't know, but no, I th- you're on to something there because you know one thing that we want to explain here and, and talk about that we so wish would be understood in the church at large today in the church around the world. And it's not that we're patting ourselves on the back or, or anything like that. We we just have this understanding that when Jesus was born, that's not when the new covenant started. And when Jesus taught a lot of the things that he taught, it wasn't new covenant stuff. And if you can, just for a second, you know, just imagine, you know, we've got these four books called the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and right at the beginning of those, right before Matthew, in in your Bible, you'll see a page that says the New Testament, and that's actually in the wrong place. And Cappy, you were talking before we uh, we started recording here about how, you know, if you could just rip that out and and put that actually where it, it should begin, when the New Covenant really did begin. But just imagine yourself, the the, uh, the book of Malachi is the last book of what we know as the Old Testament. Well, there was a 400-year period between that and uh, between the time of Malachi and the birth of Jesus. And so just imagine yourself as a Jew living in the year zero, or around the time when Jesus was born, he was actually born 4 or 5 BC, according to some sources, and he was born around then and maybe started his public ministry somewhere around you know the late 20s or around the year 30 AD somewhere around there but just imagine you're there as a Jew and all of a sudden this Jewish teacher comes along you have no clue who he is his name is Jesus he's the son of a carpenter and he starts teaching now in your mind as a person back then at that time you're not thinking whoa here's a new guy teaching some Christian teachings No, because you see that this guy, Jesus, is a Jew, and he's teaching Jewish teachings. He's teaching the law. And what you were saying just a little bit ago, Cap, that if if it wasn't for the law, I wouldn't know what coveting is. If it wasn't for this, I wouldn't know this. Jesus came teaching 
the law as a Jew for the reason that the law was given. And the reason the law was given, of course, was to make the whole world guilty before God and to lead us to the new covenant. The new covenant hadn't started yet, remember. The teaching of the law led to the new covenant. So whenever Jesus is teaching law or teaching Jewish teachings, he's not teaching the new covenant. We got to keep that in mind. And that's important because, and, and you know, again, here's, we're a couple of guys who, who believe that the, the Bible is the Word of God and that it is truth. But this page here that I'm looking at right now called the New Testament, Words of Christ in Red, that's all it says right before the book of Matthew, pretend that isn't there for just a little bit. It's probably more back toward, uh, you know, it should be before the book of Acts probably. Somebody put that in there. And a lot of people have the mindset that the New Covenant was ushered in at the, at the birth of Christ instead of the death of Christ, and that, that's just wrong. Uh, you know, we got Scripture to back that up, but we're just going to run out of time uh, before we can cover everything here. So let's take a look at some of what Jesus said, because we just came from Malachi, as Joel was talking about, into Matthew with this guy that, again, picturing yourself there, you don't know who he is. All you know was the, the, these rumors that his mom was pregnant before she was married and things like that. Mm -hmm. Son of the carpenter, like Joel said. And so now he's, he's up on this mountain, giving this sermon. And there are so many things, if we understood that we may still be under the old covenant while he is teaching here and who he is speaking to. Who's he speaking to? He's speaking to the Jewish people. He's not speaking to you and me. Uh, I'm a Gentile. Joel, so are you. And so are most of our listeners. Mm -hmm. And that's not who he's speaking to here. And next week we'll get a little bit more into that just to clarify what I'm saying. But Joel, there are people today, if they understood what Jesus was trying to do here as a prophet under the Old Covenant, then there's many things they wouldn't be getting messed up on now if they understood the difference between the Old and the New and when they started. And so when Jesus is speaking to the Jewish people here and he says things like, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, gee, I, should I be hungering and thirsting for righteousness? Not as a believer in Christ. I don't hunger and thirst for righteousness anymore because why? Because we've become his righteousness. I don't have to hunger and thirst for it anymore. This is a part of now of who I am. It's not something I'm trying to attain or acquire. That's right. And so hopefully what we've said here today, you know, is leading up in, into some more stuff about all this because that understanding, it's it's a key foundational thing. And if you if you don't understand this, the difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, and when it began, and why Jesus was teaching the Old Covenant in a lot of what he said, not all the time, but in a lot of what he said, he was teaching Jewish teachings, he was teaching the Old Covenant. If, if you don't understand the difference there, so many things won't make sense about the New Covenant. And so many things, like in my life, I didn't understand why Paul would say certain things about the New Testament, about the New Covenant, and... It seemed to differ so much from what Jesus was saying. But if you have that foundational understanding, it begins to make sense. And so a lot of this stuff we're going to pick up on again next week. So stay close for that right here on Growing in Grace at growingingrace.org. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.